Hello and welcome to this month's Plate It Up Kentucky Proud Recipe segment. My name is Kelly Burgess and I am the Family Consumer Sciences Extension Agent with the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service here in Allen County. And today we are making a delicious soup recipe. It is butternut squash and turkey chili. So you might think that's an odd combination. I've gotten a few comments like that so far, but I can promise you it's really good. I have already taste tested it. So to get us started, I'll go over our first three ingredients and go ahead and put those in the pot and then we will continue from there. So first we're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil. And this is for our full recipe. If you've been watching for a little while, you know that sometimes I make half of the recipe here on the show, uh, but we are making the full batch of soup today. So I've already heated up my pan to medium high. So that's why you hear that oil go ahead and crackling. And then this is one chopped onion. I like to use a chopper. Um, there we go. Depending on how strong your onion is, uh, there might be a little tears involved. So I like to use my onion chopper, it's a handy way, or you can just do it by hand. And we are gonna cook this until the onions are kind of translucent. So just that whitish, we wanna get them started before we add the rest of our ingredients into our recipe. Ooh, we've got some steam here. <laughs> Okay, so while those are cooking for just a couple more minutes, we have one pound of ground turkey. Then we have one butternut squash cubed. So I've already cubed up this butternut squash. We'll talk a little bit more about that as our spotlight produce item here in just a little while. We have one can, uh, a four and a half, or a, yes, just a four and a half ounce can of the green chilies. You can choose mild, hot, whatever you prefer. We have one cup of low sodium chicken broth, two cans of petite diced tomatoes. I like to use the no salt added varieties. One can of white hominy, one can of red kidney beans, eight ounces of tomato sauce, and then a tablespoon each of cumin and chili powder and half a teaspoon of salt. So that is our ingredients, very simple. Uh, my little tip is if you go ahead and have your, all of your cans opened up ahead of time, it makes this a whole lot easier uh, when you're ready to actually cook your soup. So our onions are nice and cooked. So our next step is to go ahead and add in our turkey. So I'm gonna switch over to my wooden spoon just to break up our ground meat a little bit. And as I was making this recipe, I thought about, you know, you could really make this with several different kinds of meat. If you have uh, venison or deer meat that you like to use, this, that would be an excellent substitution for this recipe too. If you don't have ground turkey, but you have ground beef in your freezer, you can do that. Um, so really this step right here, we're just getting the pink, we're just browning our meat a little bit before we add the rest of our ingredients. So we'll let that just cook in our pot for a few minutes, kind of break it up a little bit. And while this is cooking, like I said, I'll talk a little bit more about our butternut squash. So our butternut squash is in the winter squash family. And you might think, well, it's winter time now. Does that mean the butternut squash are growing right now? Um, I was able to find fresh butternut squash available at a local farmer's market. Today's butternut squash was provided by Needmore Acres Farm, which is located right here in Scottsville. Um, but winter squashes are actually called winter squashes not necessarily because of when they grow, but because of the length of time that they're available. So winter squashes, they keep really well. If you store your butternut squash in a cool, dry place, it'll actually keep for about three months. Um, and that doesn't even have to be in the refrigerator. That can just be um, in a fruit cellar, uh, you know, in, in an upper cabinet, in a pantry. Uh, just a cool, dry place is great. Once you cut it up and cube it like this, it'll store in the refrigerator for about a week. Uh, of course, you know, we just chopped this up earlier before we, uh, before we started today. And with the butternut squash, what you'll need to do is peel that outer skin. It's kind of like a pumpkin a little bit where you don't want to eat the outer, outer skin. Uh, not like our summer squashes like zucchini and yellow squash. Uh, we do want to peel that skin away. So we've peeled the skin, we've sliced the squash long, 
and then um, there is a seed pocket down at the base. So butternut squash is kind of skinny on the top and it gets a little bit more pear shaped on the bottom. Those seeds are gonna be in the bottom. So just get a regular kitchen spoon, scoop those seeds out, and then you'll be able to just dice up your butternut squash fairly easily. So our meat is almost done cooking. We'll just give that a few more minutes. Um, the butternut squash also, if you are curious about the nutritional value, it's very high in alpha and beta carotene, which we've all heard of beta carotene. That's what we think of in carrots and other orange veggies. Uh, but alpha and beta carotene can both be converted into vitamin A once it's inside your body. So uh, that is the form that it's in in the actual vegetable. And then our body converts it to vitamin A, which can be used for all kinds of different things in our bodies. It's also high in vitamin C and fiber and relatively low in carbohydrates. So uh, if you think about you know, other uh, things that you could put in soups like potatoes, it is gonna be lower in carbohydrates than some of those starchy vegetables. A whole cup of butternut squash cubed and cooked is only 16 grams of carbohydrates, which is about uh, double what, so a half cup of mashed potatoes would probably be about 16 grams. So you get to eat twice as much butternut squash for the same amount of carbs is what I'm trying to say. Alrighty, now that our meat is all browned, we are ready to add the rest of our ingredients to this recipe. So, like I said, we have our cubed up butternut squash. It's been peeled, seeded, and cubed. So these are about uh, a little smaller than one inch cubes. Uh, I like to try and keep them all the same size. The reason to keep all of your butternut squash cubes the same size is so that they all cook at the same pace. So if there's some really small and some really big, they will be not done at the same time. So go ahead and try and make them as uniform as possible and just add that right into your pot. Perfect. And then next we will just kind of go through and add the rest of our ingredients. So these are our uh, diced green chilies. I think I chose the mild version and this is a four and a half ounce can that I've just simply emptied into this bowl. We have one cup of low sodium chicken broth. You can either purchase it in a can or a bigger carton if it's something that you use in your kitchen fairly often. And then this is two cans of low sodium petite diced tomatoes. Did not drain them, this is just the juice and everything. We'll add this into our pot. Alrighty, we have our tomatoes in. And then we have a can of red kidney beans. I have drained and rinsed these. So uh, we did drain and rinse off the extra juices in these. And then uh, this is white hominy. This might be something that you haven't cooked with before. I know it's not something that I've used very much. You can find this in the uh, canned vegetables section. It is a type of corn, so it is next to the corn. Uh, so that is where you can find white hominy. And then finally, this is eight ounces of tomato sauce. That just gives us a little extra liquid and I'll get out my rubber spatula here again to get the rest of that out. And we just wanna give this a good stir. So I'll just kinda get that all mixed around. And this recipe is really super quick. Um, this is not a soup that takes all day to make because now at this point, all we need to do is to let this simmer on our stove for about 20 to 25 minutes on uh, about a medium, medium low heat. So you wanna bring it to a simmer, uh, then turn your heat down, let it sit. You'll know it's done when the butternut squash cubes have become soft. So I like to get out a fork and just test one out and see if, it, if the fork easily pierces it. If it does, then you know your soup is ready. So before we put the lid on and let it simmer, Let's add our spices. This is our uh, tablespoon of chili powder, our tablespoon of cumin, and our half teaspoon of salt. Of course, you can adjust the salt. Uh, if you weren't able to find low sodium variety canned products, you might not need to add the salt at all. I was able to find low sodium canned products for everything, so I added just a little bit of salt to give it some flavor. Of course, your other option is always to just uh, flavor, you know, add salt and pepper to your bowl after you have already tasted it. 
So this is our butternut squash and turkey chili. This is a brand new recipe from our Plated Up Kentucky Proud recipe brand. Uh, like I said, this is super easy and it's delicious. It's a little bit of a spin off of a regular chili, but it's still very hearty, very delicious and very healthy. So if you would like this recipe, you can get it in a variety of ways. You can contact barry.hyatt at nctc.com. You can also find Plate It Up Kentucky Proud in your uh, online search engine bar, or you can find Plate It Up Kentucky Proud on Facebook for this recipe and many others. So we hope that you enjoyed learning how to make butternut squash and turkey chili today. We hope that you try it at home, and we'll see you next month uh, for our next recipe segment. Have a great day.